I don't go to a channel to watch them. I just find what I want and watch it. Um, and I, you know, if I'm doing that, I believe everyone else is doing. You know, a lot of other people are doing that. Um, so I just try to match that in my approach. But that said, you know, obviously you want eventually something in in all of that content wherever you're putting it to point back to to who you are because it's important that people know what you're doing for the community. Um, so I, I think you've got to have that structure on the back end that does, like, that, that does encapsulate all of these things. But I don't think that you have to s slap people over the face with all the different things you do. I think you need to give them what they want and hope that that's enough for them to, uh, to find your larger picture um, uh, programming. So, um, well, there's two different approaches. Like, the stuff that I do, my own personal work, is much more in the vein of the uh, music uh, program that you have, where I have like a customized website with my own stuff and a very elaborate presentation visually. But as far as CMN TV, I, um, centralizing all of our work and eventually hopefully the producer's work in our video on demand section is in my mind playing off of what would be one of the strengths of our community access center as a physical gathering spot for people in the community. Meaning that is one site within the community, and in our case, 11 different communities, that they all know to look at, like a spotlight on a stage, so that they know, oh, I want to know what's going on in the community. I want to know what my neighbors are producing or thinking. And much like the TV channel, having that one video on demand site is an easy place to say, it's right here. And sort of ties into also justifying our physical existence in the cities. Like, well, one of the cities pulled their funding, and, and part of their argument was, well, everybody can just go on YouTube right now. I mean, you can go on YouTube right now, but in essence, you're a drop of water in an ocean, whereas we're kind of like a focused spotlight where you can say, yes, there's all that noise, but right here, this is what's going on in Troy, or this is what's going on in here. And practically, like, that would be great to break out those certain things, but Technically and organizationally, we're just nowhere near that. Like, you're very blessed to have an IT department. Yeah. We don't have that. Yeah. So just pulling off, getting a video on demand section, and getting people used to going there and looking at things is a monumental task. So it's a lot of practical matters. set up um, your YouTube account separately, right. and then you go into Blip, um, in somewhere in the administrative settings, there's a okay. place to connect different accounts. Okay? Oh, and you can okay. connect a YouTube account. When you upload a video to Blip, yeah. and that upload screen, lower down, I think it's like distribution or something, there's okay. a checkbox for YouTube, and then you, it'll, once it goes to Blip, it'll kick it over to YouTube, and then to Facebook. Do you know if, like, we can, is it that way with all our, our content? I think you can, yes, go back and open up that screen and kick and try it. I think, okay. yeah, it'll, it'll do it. Okay. Um, the one caveat might be, like, um, our YouTube account randomly was approved to have longer than 15 minutes. I don't know if new free accounts still have that yeah. limit on it. I don't know anymore. Okay. So that might be something to pay attention to. Making a separate physical upload because I have taken stuff off of Blip and like YouTube retains it. So I think I think I mean I don't know for sure, but I think they're actually just making a duplicate there. So I'm gonna go with Chris on that as well because YouTube is a host site; it will create yeah. embed codes. Where Miro is a streaming site, so if Blip goes, then this content from Blip would leave Miro. But with YouTube, it is a host site, so I would go with Chris. We're all at the mercy of giant corporate overlords and they're, you know, <laughs> whims in the moment. So. Right. I think you can go back into the admin in the browser okay. and find cool. that.
something like that to blip, and, and then you automatically send out notices to people, say either through their friend's site or whatever, or RSS, and, uh, to say, hey, we've got this new, in, you know, new content out there. You, and, and Sometimes we do, like, uh, we can hook a Twitter account to it, so we can automatically send a message to our Twitter account saying, hey, there's a new video online. We have it set up to um, send to our own website. We have it set up to go to our Facebook page. We don't do that on all of them, but we can. Um, I don't know if there's like an automatic way to send out an email to people, but I would say, I would say guide them. Like, uh, let's say you have a group of people that want to watch all of our reaching out stuff. You might say, okay, you guys can subscribe to our reaching out feed from Blip or from our Miro site, and then every time we upload a new reaching out nonprofit video, that would come into their aggregator. Let them know that it's there. I, I, I go back to my original question. I mean, what you just pointed on was the tension between the viewing patterns, which people don't watch series, right. of nonprofit programs. Right. They look for a content of their interest and are challenged in a channelized environment, which is our history baggage, right. is that. People don't search for, look for, find for, encounter it in a channelized fashion. Um, they are driven by either some social draw or something that someone knows and refers to me, social networking, or I have a specific need for information and I am searching to consume that information. So I'm just curious about how, how, that, how, how that process really helps it versus being stuck in a channelized world. Is I think I think that uh, people are not necessarily used to seeing things in channels, but they are used to seeing things in series. Um, and so, if you know, say you do have a nonprofit that you've interviewed on a specific topic, and you've got this series of you know, like we have something like that called NPO Showcase. So, say somebody you know wants to see uh, an episode of NPO Showcase about you know, a nonprofit that deals with, you know, getting lead out of old homes or something like that. Um, and they, they watch this, and I think that they do then find other things in that series and other topics, because if you're going to be interested enough to watch that, you're probably interested in other similar things, which are probably in that same series. Um, so it's kind of like your channel... You, you, the question that you keep getting back to is actually really interesting, but my intuition is that, you know, from my own watching habits, like my roommates and I have been watching, catching up on True Blood lately, you know, so I, I couldn't tell you what channel made True Blood, but, you know, when I watch the first True Blood, I'm like, dang, I want to see another one, so I always, like, find that series, or if I'm on YouTube and I watch some, you know, funny video, uh, like, uh, uh, the first one that pops into my head is like the epic rap battles of history, you know, and I see one of them randomly and it's funny. And then I suddenly, I just realize there's this whole series and I start looking through the back history of that series. Um, and again, that's just me, that's me speaking off the cuff about the way that I feel like people interact with content these days. So. What I, can I, I just want to finish on that. What I think maybe you're getting at is sort of a larger question of the old media versus new media, because that could apply to everything versus the internet. And then, <laughs> right, I mean, because, well, why do we need physical bookstores? Why do we need libraries? Why do we need a TV channel? I could just search for anything I want. Well, yeah, you can, but then there are different modes of viewing because sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. Or sometimes I, you know, I, I really like going to a physical bookstore because there's stuff I don't know that I'm gonna find. You know, there's the serendipity um, argument and, and you can create an algorithm for that and be completely inhuman, but, you know, my bother. So at a certain point, if you go if you go far enough down that track, then really there's no justification. What are the justifications for TV existing anymore, radio existing anymore, the cinema existing anymore? I think if you take it far enough out, and then yeah, like you should just have a bunch of discrete files online that you search for, and then everyone lives in an atom bubble. But then you know we're a community media, so give it a gathering point, give it a channel. Yes, some of the Programs are going to play linearly on the channel at specific times, and that's where you're going to be able to watch them. And if the producers have taken the time to upload it, 
they can go and find more on our website. Like we have one guy that does, he probably does four different shows a week and he's on the channel a lot. And then, and he's, um, and he discovered Facebook. And so now he's promoting the show, uploaded bits to his Facebook friends and promoting the live stream to people around the world. And he's constantly calling to make sure our live stream is functioning because it's very easy for us to bump into a wire and just disable it. And um, <laughs> make sure it's on because he has people in France and Australia that want to watch his show at that certain time. So. He's using all of that new technology and simultaneously getting them to watch it on the channel, which TV was invented in the, what, the 20s and 30s? So, I don't know, it's all a big mishmash. I feel like we've developed this weird little, like, yin, yin, yin argument thing going on here. But I like what you're doing. I, yeah, and I don't disagree with anything you're saying. Can I ask a question? I was just going to say, I think it's important that it's not either or. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it's about the user, it's about the customer, and it's about providing that content to the people as they use it. Sometimes I am looking for something specific, sometimes I'm not. So if you're going to randomize it, then you want to be careful about the branding so that people know where they're getting it from, and then they find value in that. But then if you're going to channelize it, then you have to make sure to put good content on there. And that way, they will say, hmm, if I want to go and find XYZ, I'm going to go to this site because I know I will find something there. I don't know what, but I know I'm going to find something good. I, oh, go ahead. I, I totally agree with that. And I, I kind of was mentioned that before. Like, I think that things always need to point back to the source. You know, and, and so it's, it's important to always point back. And I think at the source, you know, there is your, there is your kind of main place where you're collecting everything. But I, I guess what I'm getting at is that I don't see I don't see like the marketing side of it always pointing to the big pile. I, I see the marketing side using the little the little slivers that somebody might be particularly interested in to kind of hit them with with exactly what they're wanting. But it's always it's always got to have some sort of line going back to the larger picture, the larger organization, and like a collection point um, of all that. Uh, Well, I mean, cognitive recognition, right brain, left brain, you're always going to have people that approach any one thing in two different ways. And, and I think this is a good example of what we're talking but about. I, but I, I also agree with him. So, right. just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're doing it just to make it interesting. People. Right. Yes. <laughs> we didn't bring any puppets. <laughs> exists in an internet world I can't ask for something I don't know about so you have to channelize some ways people go through the cable channels click click oh that's interesting that's how they find us stumble upon that and so it, so 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 channelizing is good but I find um, with our Vimeo tracking our Vimeo once we create a program for an entity and they put that on their website with their their world now all of a sudden wow they found it which is points back to us because yeah. we did it but all of a sudden, it's it's that it is that you have to go to the different avenues, or you don't get the people. You have to they have, you got to go to their world. So then, when they actually click on that video, it takes them right back to your Vimeo page, and on the sidebar, there's all the other stuff. You right, want. and so so you have to do that. And but channelizing is good because people sometimes you don't know, people we've been taught to sit there and let it come at us and say, oh, I like that, or I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. Oh, I do like that. The internet's the other way. If I want to go find something, great. So it is, it is a balance. Uh, do you use mural community to, what do you call that, channelizing, basically anything, a certain, anything that concerns Troy or CMM communities is in your mural community? Is that how you? Yeah, the mural community, the real benefit is the structure of it and the ease of use as far as creating a decent looking presentation on the website. Prior to us having that and to implementing <laughs> Um, like a WordPress blog, people at the station were creating a unique HTML page for a Google video and embedding them one by one. Miro Community just uh, facilitates and automates that, so all we have to do is paste in a URL and tick the approve box. And then it, I mean, yeah, I put categories in for each city and organized it that way, but it just, it was just a, just a structure, it was just a tool to, to make that look nice and I don't have to think about it anymore. So someone else in your community are other people able to add their own stuff that links together? Well, if we would like them to, very few have. The goal would be that people that have, 
uh, that are members of the station would. Like we have two that have done it so far. And um, as I said, in uh, back in January, we revamped the classes. We just restructured them to include an uploading component. Prior to that, there was no capacity to upload video, so our students never really even thought about it. So now they're just sort of beginning to do that, and then it's now trickling into stuff being submitted for this. I can kind of touch on that, too, because we do that at CTN, and we started it maybe six or seven months ago, and we have over 700 videos that the community has put there. Now, some of them are our videos, only the public channel, so only 17, but the users have to go in and submit that host site, so YouTube, Vimeo, Blip. We do teach classes on Blip and Miro and how they're separate, but why would you want to use Miro? I solely promote it to our producers as a distribution station, as a platform to send it somewhere else as well. And a really cool story that we just found out to about a week ago, one of our community producers spent a few months making a two-hour documentary on her family coming over here, immigrating, how they got started, six generations of Ukrainian families. She put it on Flip, linked it to Miro. Miro's a great search engine. Her family, long distant, like third cousin, searched her family name, found the video, contacted our station, and we reconnected that family. So something like that was really beneficial just on that platform of Google. It was the first thing that came up. Yeah, we've, um, the Alliance has done a few. We've done one with Eric from Battle Creek, and I did one with Lucy Ann at Lake Orion about Blip and so more social media, but how we tied Mirror Community into that. Yep. Yeah, state, Michigan State Chapter Meeting. Yep, yep. Um. <laughs> but yes, it has been beneficial for Ann Arbor because there's so many different community producers that have different content. And I know Dave's one of them that links his stuff. And people will email us, hey, I saw this on your channel. Where can I find it online? And most of the time, we just give the Miro site right to them. found all these various sites or, or, or programs and was able to tie them all into, you know, link them all somehow to her Miro. So when you went to her Miro site, you could see all this other stuff that was out there that nobody had actually tried to link to her, but she was able to randomly find them and link them. I didn't know if anybody else had done that too. Yeah, oh, that leads me to, I guess, a closing statement of all of our organizations are unique in our own way. We have the same core values, but we really have to think about our audience. You know, who are we trying to reach and how are we trying to help them? Um, I asked Ben Jones from Kalamazoo to come. He just started a mirror site with them, and his site is completely different than ours. Our Miro site is really a public access video on demand site. Ben Jones created a site for pretty much every organization within the city of Kalamazoo to center, centrically hub all their videos. So he has videos from the, Ann Arbor, or the Kalamazoo Public Library, I mean, all these other organizations, fire and police. And he said, I'm running out of space because I'm pulling so many videos into here. So that's how he uses that. Um, I guess I. No, um, Miro is just a host site, so it just streams those videos. Yeah, yep. The video yep. stays on YouTube or wherever you upload it, and Miro just displays it nicely. Once you said that running out running out of space. Miro does. You can have like a free account, and they only give you a 500 video limit. But we decided to upgrade because at any given time, a community producer or a independent filmmaker could upload all their content, and I wanted to have enough room for them. So we did upgrade. I think it's, well, it's not very expensive. It's like $30 a month. You can get right. the nonprofit rate, and I think it's unlimited uploading.